Chapter 7, section 1 is about zero and negative exponents. Uh, this is a two-part lesson, and we want you to just be able to evaluate and simplify these exponents. Okay, this one is just going to give you a little example of what exponents kind of mean, especially negative exponents. Okay, so if I fill out this chart, 2 to the 4th, remember, means not 2 times 4, but it means I need to multiply 4 2s together. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. 2 to the 3rd power is 8. 2 to the 2nd is 4th. 2 to the 1st is 2. 2 to the 0 power, this one may be new, is just 1. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the negative 1st is actually 1 over 2. And 2 to the negative 2nd is 1 over 4. Okay, on the 10 side, 10 to the 4th power, remember, is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So we have 10,000. 10 to the 3rd is 1,000. 10 to the 2nd is 100. 10 to the 1st is just 10. 10 to the 0 is 1. Notice how we're taking zeros away each time. That kind of explains why anything to the 0 power is just 1. 10 to the negative 1st is 1 over 10. And 10 to the negative 2nd is 1 over 100. Okay, so hopefully you can tell here that negative exponents actually don't make a negative answer, but they turn things into fractions. All right, first set of vocab is zero as an exponent. Every non-zero number that has zero as an exponent equals one. Four to the zero power equals one. Negative three to the zero power, still one. Decimals to the zero power, still one. Every non-zero number that has a zero exponent is equal to one. Negative exponents turn the, num the base number into a fraction. So seven to the negative third power is one over seven to the third power. Once you've turned it into a fraction or moved it down to the bottom, it's no longer negative. You've done what it means. Okay, we like to maybe talk about it as this being an unhappy number. It doesn't like where it is, so it needs to move to the other floor. Once it moves to where it wants to be, then it's happy again, and you don't have to have that negative anymore. All right, so now we're just going to show how to simplify these. If they give us 9 to the negative second power, this negative 2 tells us that we have to move it down to the bottom. So we have 1 over 9 to the second power. Then to simplify it, I can actually figure out what 9 to the second power is. Nothing happens to my 1, but since 9 to the second power is 81, my final answer is 1 over 81. Okay, so let's try this A, B, C, D, E down here at the bottom. Because I have a negative exponent, I'm going to write it as a fraction, 1 over 4 to the third power. And because 4 to the third power is 64, I have 1 over 64. Letter B has a zero exponent, so it doesn't even matter what's in here. My answer is just going to be one. Three to the negative second means I need to put three to the second on the bottom, and three to the second power is nine, so I have one over nine. Six to the negative one means I need to put six to the first on the bottom, and six to the first power is just six, so I have one over six. And a negative four to the negative second power means I need 1 on top, the negative 4 doesn't change, but that negative 2 puts us on the bottom. And negative 4 to the second power is actually a positive 16. All right. An algebraic expression must be simplified and only include positive exponents. Okay, so we should never have negative exponents once we're finished simplifying. Okay, so if I'm looking for the simplified version of this 5a to the third times b to the negative second, I can't do anything with this 5a to the third, but I do know that this has to move down to the bottom of a fraction. So if I write a fraction, b to the second power goes on the bottom, I didn't have to change any of this 5a to the third, and there's nothing else that I can simplify. So this is my final answer. 
1 over x to the negative fifth. Now, we haven't seen this before with the negative exponent on the bottom, but again, because it's a negative exponent, it doesn't like where it is, and we need to move it to the other floor. So this is actually going to equal a 1 on the top times x to the fifth on the top, and now there's nothing left on the bottom, so we don't have to worry about this fraction anymore. And 1 times x to the fifth just equals x to the fifth. Okay, I want you to pause right here and see if you can simplify these five exponent equation, expressions and then come on back and see if you got the same answers as I did. All right, welcome back. X to the negative ninth makes me move down, so I have one over X to the ninth with nothing left to simplify. Letter B, this needs to move up to the top, so I now have N to the third on the top with nothing left on the bottom. My 4 can stay on the top, and my b can stay on the top, but the c to the negative third has to move to the bottom. The 2 gets to stay on the top, but the a to the third has to move up to the top, and now there's nothing left on the bottom, so I get to keep 2a to the third. And last but not least, the m to the second stays on the bottom, and that n to the fifth has to move to the bottom. Since I can't have a fraction with things on the bottom and nothing on the top, we just put a 1 up top, and that's our final answer. Alright, that's the end of part 1. Check back for part 2.